So now we are going to explain the operation of our stable multivibrator which is also called free running multivibrator. To study its operation we use number one a CRO here we use a DSO of uh, 60 megahertz frequency and it has four channels channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 and in addition with this DSO we need uh, a kit of multi vibrator basically this kit consists of two main circuits one is power supply that provides 9 volt DC supply through these uh, port and uh, second circuit uh, is a stable multi vibrator circuit or free running circuit or free running multi vibrator circuit that uses uh, uh, two uh, transistors and these transistors are PNP based and series of both transistors are 2 and double line 5 and uh, both transistors are operated under forward active mode as you know that in forward active mode base to emitter junction is forward biased while collector to base junction is reverse biased so under step 1 uh, we first of all uh, extract uh, the 9 volt supply which is connected to the free running multi vibrator circuit so here we extract 9 volt DC supply with the help of red and black leads and uh, with the help of these uh, black and red leads the input signal is connected to the minus 9 volt uh, port and plus 9 volt port of the earth stable multi vibrator and here plus 9 volt basically uh, used as a, a common ground signal here we use PNP transistor that's why here we use minus 9 volt if we use a, a NPN transistor then we use plus 9 volt but here we use a PNP based transistor that's why here we use minus 9 volt power supply minus 9 volt DC power supply so under step 1 we apply the input signal which is coming from the uh, power supply uh, and then under step 2 our main aim is here to check output basically in this circuit there are two output ports so with the help of these two output ports we check two different outputs with the help of transistor 1 and transistor 2 and then we connect uh, uh, these output uh, signal to the DSO through these uh, coaxial cables and it is and these output uh, signals are connected to the two different input ports of uh, DSO here and these wires are called coaxial wires so here under two under step two uh, our main aim is to connect output uh, signal through output port to the input port of the uh, DSO and then we make sure that the all connections are correct then we turn on the power supply so here we have turned on the power supply then you can see that the CRO is starting and after that we start the power supply that means we turn on the power supply of uh, multi vibrator kit and in observation phase under first step we observe the output waveform through DSO by changing the value of capacitances here you can see that there are three different capacitances in the kit number one one is uh, 1 nanofarad second one is 3 nanofarad and third one is uh, 10 nanofarad so by changing the value of capacitances we observe the period especially periods of uh, two different output waveforms of free running multi vibrator here so here first in case one that means for the value of capacitances which is one point one. Uh, sorry one nanofarad we observe the output waveforms and here 
it can be observed that the frequency of both uh, output uh, pulses are near about 8.47 kilohertz and when we and when we change the value of capacitance from 1 nanofarad to 3 nanofarad then the period will get change and you can see here that the period will increase here that's why on the same time the frequency will decrease and it is near about 2.82 kilohertz but in case of 1 nanofarad it is about 8.47 or 8 point yeah 8.47 kilohertz but when we change the value of capacitance from 1 nanofarad to 3 nanofarad frequency will decrease from 4 point something uh, 4 point something kilohertz to 2.82 kilohertz that means with increase in the capacitance the value of frequency will decrease and at the same time with increase in the value of capacitance the time period of output pulse or output waveform of a stable multi vibrator will increase so now in case 3 we change the value of capacitance from 3 nanofarad to 10 nanofarad and in this case you can observe that the frequency is about 847 hertz that means in case of 10 nanofarad you get minimum value of frequency which is about which is near about 847 hertz so you can observe that or you can note 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 that the value of uh, frequency will increase will decrease with increase in capacitances and here we use three different uh, cases of capacitances in first case we choose uh, 1 nanofarad in second case we use 3 nanofarad and in third case of capacitance we use 8 nanofarad and for these corresponding values of capacitances the corresponding values of uh, frequency observed frequency of two waveforms waveforms uh, decrease from 4.7 kilohertz to 847 hertz so now in next step our main aim is to calculate the value of uh, these frequencies through analytically and here in three different cases of capacitances we calculate the analytical value or theoretical value of uh, these uh, frequencies and uh, these output waveforms through simple expression here which is formulated as 1 upon 0 0.69 into R1 C1 plus R2 C2 and on the basis of this frequency formula we can derive the time period time constant form, uh, formula which can be equal to 0 0.69 into R1 C1 plus R2 C2 here so in first case where the value of resistance is are 82 kilo ohm in both cases r1 and r2 and and the capacitance value is 1 nanofarad so when we substitute these values of resistance and capacitance then we get the value of frequency here which is equal to 8.837 kilohertz and this is analytical frequency value that we have uh, calculated theoretically with the help of this expression now in case 2 where the capacitance value is 3 nanofarad but the value of resistance resistances are same so when we substitute the corresponding value of r and c in case 2 then we get the value of uh, measured value of frequency which is equal to 2.985 kilohertz by applying the same formula of frequency and similarly in case 3 
where we use 10 nanofarad of capacitance we get the value of frequency which is equal to 83.33 hertz so these are the analytical values calculated under three different cases of capacitances so now uh, thereafter we calculate the deviation or you can see that the percentage error or you can see that the change in the value in uh, observed frequency and calculated frequency with the help of a simple formula which is formulated here here the percentage error is equal to the observed value minus theoretical value that means calculated value divided by observed value into 100 and when we substitute the observed value and uh, measured or you can say that uh, calculated value in this expression then easily you can calculate the percentage error so in first case here the percentage error is 1.029 and in case 2 it is about 1.35 so by using this formula in last step you can check the deviation in uh, observed frequency with the uh, with the help of uh, calculated frequency so by using these steps we can study the uh, performance of uh, all stable or free running multi vibrator so here these are the basic steps under these step we study today we study the performance or operation of free running multi vibrator or all stable multi vibrator in this uh, multi vibrator there are two outputs and these are the corresponding waveforms of two output of free running uh, multi vibrator and basically in this experiment we use dso to display the output waveform and this is the main purpose here to use a uh, DSO you can use uh, any other DSO you can use CRO also but here we use DSO because it is available in our lab and in addition with DSO to study the operation of a stable multi vibrator we also use a multi vibrator kit that consists of a power supply and the main circuit of free running a stable multi vibrators so now i am going to stop here thank you so much for watching this video